passed away. We wanted men. Welcome to episode 193 of the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. I'm Glenn. Jason's with us. And then we got a very special guest, Mr. Jerry Hancock, who's going to help us recap some of Rogue Fun. He actually hosted, uh, did one of the panels for us. Uh, Jerry's been a been a, a good listener show. He's a good friend, a listener to the show. Helps out with the Star Wars Club. And uh, Jerry, how you doing, buddy? Good. Good. Good to be, to be here watching the magic happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is magic. We're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are my, my drive time company, man. I mean, seriously. Uh, Tuesdays, I can't wait. That, that week after Rogue Fun, I was lost because you guys didn't do an episode. And I'm like... Am I supposed to be somewhere? Where <laughs> mm, yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. Really it was crazy. weird for me too because I kept like going to the because I'll I'll watch the numbers and I'll keep I kept going to the uh the app and I'm like, oh no, I don't have an episode to watch this week. <laughs> how how'd the nope. how the last episode do? Is it it did it's pretty average. good. We're I mean we're we're averaging averaging about two hundred. So I mean right. we're we're it takes about a week to get there. So I mean the numbers are numbers are good. We, I can't complain about them. Yeah, thank you for listening. Yes, thank you <laughs> for thank being you. one of our two hundred. And oh. thank you, listener, for listening to the Smugglers Galaxy podcast. If you could please leave a no. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking just before we came on air. We were talking about how you guys are. St- are you Jason still recovering? Are you still recovering, Jerry? From real oh, fun, I. Well, I'll be honest, it, the way Rogue Fun sort of landed, it it was right in the middle of the teacher's busiest part of the entire academic year. So it was, we, if nothing else, it gave me, you know, three days to step away from that madness. But it's, it's and that's why I left on Sunday, you know, I didn't even get to bowling. I was going to try and go to bowling. I was like, I have to go home. I have to get some sleep because if I roll in on Monday morning and I, I knew it was going to hit the fan as soon as I walked in the door. And of course it did, but yeah, all that's winding down. We had graduation this morning and we graduated 560 kids. And that was why I was, you know, couldn't sync up with you guys as far as getting together to record. Cause we didn't really know when, when graduation was going to happen. Cause we've had a lot of storms and stuff down here and, tornadoes and all this stuff so they were sort of trying to dodge all that to handle it so i had to keep today open the whole day but we ended up doing it at like eight this morning we were done by like 11 so i've just been hanging out today decompressing i've got some post planning crap i have to do on monday through wednesday but other than that i'm i'm solid now awesome good good to hear did uh y'all pick anything up this week Jason, did you get another Sabine TIE fighter? No, no, <laughs> not yet. I only have the one. Sorry. <laughs> blah, blah. And Glenn, it's in pristine condition. I look I don't I do I don't even collect uh micro galaxy squadron, but I look every time I'm in a store. I went to Target today and I look. I know Walmarts are where they're showing up if they show up, but mm-hmm. I always look just to see if there's anything new and on the chance that there might be a Sabine TIE fighter that somehow they're showing up in Mexico right now, so. Yeah. Well, I know uh, Daniel Bouchard was at the the uh, Kennesaw run, and mm-hmm. Glenn was trying to persuade him. To <laughs> I was like, hey, you're in Canada, down. right? <laughs> and he said, I don't collect modern. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> well, I, I noticed because um, I had picked up a couple and I had them on, on the still um, hadn't unboxed them yet. And people were like, OK, I listen to your podcast and this line pisses you off, but you're still collecting it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. What can I say? Well, for punishment. Right, Such exactly. is the life of a collector. <laughs> never <laughs> happy, never satisfied, but you still do it because you love it. Yeah. The only thing I got was that Micro Galaxy Squadron Return of the Jedi pack with the ATST with the special deco, the uh, Ewok with the glider, and then uh, Luke and Leia on the speeder bike with the speeder uh, biker scout with the blast effect in the back. I picked that up. That's the only thing I picked up this week. Jerry, you get anything? I've been pretty slow, honestly. Um, I got a. Uh... I've been buying two to three of everything the retro collection puts uh, puts out. So I got a second uh, Phantom Menace set from Target. I um, already had one that I had opened, so I'll keep this one sealed. And then um, I got a couple more. I told myself I wasn't going to get the Book of Boba Fett retro Luke Jedi or Grogu. I've already I have them sealed. But I told myself I wasn't going to get the loose ones, but I, I can't resist. So I got I got a couple of those. I think I picked up the Luke Jedi at Rogue Fun, but then I got the Grogu this week. So, yeah, that's have, about all. <laughs> you have to get those on Hasbro Pulse or Shop Disney, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes I'll go through Hasbro's uh, eBay page as well because it's like, you know, they have it on their price with free shipping. So I, uh, I'll go through there sometimes as well. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't really been buying a whole lot of stuff lately. I just, uh, I know I'm sort of at, sort of like the the soul collector. <laughs> you heard of soul servers? I'm the soul collector. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not it's not always about the chase for me. I've I've found some degree of uh, balance. Yeah, exactly. Sanity. Yeah, exactly. I, I've got what I love and. I guess the other thing is, is that now since we we moved a couple of years ago, it's like I have a proper room to have everything out in, and you know, being an introvert, I have to have my recharge time. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of recharging in my office. So when I get home, I come in here, I flip all the lights on, and you know, get into my space, and it helps me sort of recharge. <laughs> I zoom, I pew pew, I. <laughs> exactly, and i feel better yeah exactly it is it's uh and it's interesting you know from a psychological standpoint because um i was an only child and being a product of gen x uh part of the divorce generation you know, my parents split up uh, my dad moved out the summer between first and second grade but in that time before my my star wars toys were always my escapism so it makes sense that it still works that way as an adult because yeah. uh yeah when i was a kid and they were having their problems that's you know i'd grab my my case of toys and take off outside and and that was how i you know found my closure i guess but uh yeah so i guess it makes sense that i i still do this as an adult it's uh you know i keep my batteries charged the rest of development yeah. <laughs> How about you, Glenn? Did you pick anything up? Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think I picked anything up Star Wars wise. I I was uh at the liquor store today and uh I went to buy <laughs> this one doesn't thing. Doesn't count. This doesn't count. But go ahead. <laughs> oh God, it does because it's beer. But as I'm rounding a corner, just go I see through your it. grocery list. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got a stick of butter. Yeah, I bought a. I bought some uh, apples and bananas. But no, as I'm rounding the corner, there's this beer that I like it by Abita. It's a Mardi Gras box, and it only comes out at Mardi Gras. And <laughs> yeah, they had three cases of it sitting there. Oh, so I'm like, so I will, I'm going to buy these cases. And then they, uh, they ring them up and they're like $7 a case. I went, wait, those are $7, a, a, like a six pack. They're like, yeah. I said, how much more do you have? And so I bought them out of Mardi Gras box. And then <laughs> as I'm, as I'm, as I'm stacking it up, at the house because I got to move stuff around to make room for four cases of beer. I drop a case. Oh, I only lost two beers, but my basement's probably going to smell like beer for like weeks. <laughs> and what's the difference? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm still trying to finish up the beer from Road Fun. Right. <laughs> you had, you I had like all the beer. Oh, man. I, was, 
I mean, I was impressed how much actually got drank, but at the same time, there was still a lot of stuff left because, I mean, I brought two cases and I think Ryan Shaw brought a case and we were trying to help Narayan sort of offset the expenses, you know, because he, the guy just, God, he, he spares no expense when he does anything at his place. And so he had posted, you know, well, what should I do about beer? And Ryan and I were like, okay, well, we'll, we'll take care of the beer. You don't worry about the beer. So I go out and get all this beer. Ryan gets all this beer. And then we show up and Ryan has like four cases of beer. <laughs> so yeah, there was beer out the wazoo. And uh, there was, a lot there was two ice chests or coolers of beer that he was over at my place. He's like, I'm not going to drink it. I'm like, I'm not going to drink it. <laughs> but I had a refrigerator, so I have like two cases or two uh, uh, coolers full of uh, beer in my refrigerator that I'm not going to drink. So <laughs> come on over, let's get this done. Well, next Party. time you do a movie night, then yeah. just make sure you get the audio fixed. Right, <laughs> it's a sore subject. I hated that happened, man. Damn. You know. <laughs> and then I'm in the middle of you know like running from person to person and trying to talk to people and show things off, and I'm like getting reports that the audio stopped i'm like what <laughs> this is what? not how this weekend's gonna go <laughs> no i refuse but then <laughs> screen stopped working in the middle of someone's pen right and what was that <laughs> what was that <laughs> but so what, what we're we gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the last panel the kenner panel well we finished i thought we had finished up the panels but we could talk about the kenner panel because no, no, jerry i mean huh so we're going into room sales we were going into room sales but yeah, um, yeah, that because we had left off at the last panel of the night, and then we were going into room sales, um, which I didn't really pay much attention because I was busy shutting things down. <laughs> you didn't get to walk around room sales. No, not really, unfortunately. Yeah, which... that room sales because it um, it was overwhelming. Room sales are always overwhelming sometimes at some point, but this one was worse because. I'm trying to set out my stuff and then I'm getting, you know, there again, I'm getting pulled in a couple of different directions because my wife was wanting me to move, help figure. She was trying to figure out where they were going to move their table to. And I'm trying to get in there and set my stuff up. And then the room's filling up. So you want to try to walk around. So there's like four things, five things you want to do at once. So yeah, I was sort of in the same boat you're in to where it was, it was just a blur. Room it was a work. very unique room sales for me. I don't think I'll ever experience this again because people were bringing me things. Oh, really? Yeah, like the Leia thing. And it's like I was just walking by the table and they're like, oh, here, Paul's got this for you. Yeah. And then Ryan <laughs> Ryan from Canada, Ryan Dukes, he pulled out the Sabine. He's like, here, do you want this? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so it was a very unique experience. I don't think I'll ever have that again. It comes with being, you know... Uh uh podcast celebrity right everybody right. Knows your wants and needs <laughs> yeah it's becoming the point where i have to hit people with a bat when i'm in the grocery store because i'm such a podcast celebrity <laughs> get away get away i, I just still i just want to get my beer right <laughs> my mardi gras beer that's i'm still waiting for that to happen March. i've only say that again jason uh i just wanted my mardi gras beer that's on clearance for march you're right exactly <laughs> I've only had one person ever look at me and go, Glenn? And that was at a convention. And I think he was kind of looking for me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he... Although it's gotten a little different now because you don't yell like you used to now that you've got your thing in. So yeah, you have to be like right next to you to, to hear your voice. You can't. It used to be when we'd go to those summer, those uh, every Saturday, or the the Powder Springs Toy Show, you could hear you from across the parking lot, but that's not the case. Now it's like, is Glenn even here? Right. Well, I'm also trying to make a con conscious effort to lower my voice. Oh. So, oh, okay. so, yeah, it's twofold. We'll bring it down. Maybe I need to get a hearing aid. I, I know I have <laughs> hearing loss from, you know, too many years of loud music and such, but uh, yeah, I, I think part of it is genetic. I'm just loud naturally, and then part of it's hearing loss, and then part of it's being a teacher because exactly I was, was going to say that i'm going to speak over people <laughs> how was room sales for you it was cool um there was you know oh my god it was such an overload 
to see all that stuff, I mean, the variety was just incredible. Um, the piece that caught my, well, there are a couple pieces that really caught my attention, but all of them were beyond my my means at the time. Um, I saw the Butch and Sundance Cantina that Narayan got, which, holy crap, <laughs> you don't see those every day. Right. Um, so that was that was pretty pretty big highlight. Um, and then the sealed uh, mailer six uh, three pack that uh with the vader emperor it's the sears pack with the vader emperor and uh royal guard um i was really hoping that i might be able to afford that but i think the seller got it back when the market was peaked out and he was trying to get his money back and i just was like wow yeah i can't can't go that but daniel bouchard actually did get it he he bought oh. the thing wow. um so I know it went to a good home, but uh, that was really cool. Uh, the swag, and that was the other thing. It was like, it, it was almost like a swag convention <laughs> sort of tied in with the room sales because the swag game, and I'm sure, you know, part of it's Narayan, you know, the swag king is, you're you're coming to his, uh, his, his turf. Everybody brings their A game. And so, yeah, the swag was just, wow um but yeah i mean it, it, getting to see everybody and 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 looking up and seeing you know steve sansui walking around and yeah just the whole evening the whole day was just such an overload and it went so fast that's the thing you know it's like one of those things where um i don't know that it went so fast for for you guys oh, it, it did it flew it flew, <laughs> it flew by <laughs> But I, I mean, part of it is probably you guys are so busy. I mean, Jason was, you know, sort of like hanging out with with Oz behind the curtain. Him and Mark were doing, you know, handling all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, just the whole day was wow, what an event! And what are your what are your what? Well, that, since you're like, what what were your thoughts on on the whole on the whole thing? Or did you want to wait till the end of the thing, Jason? Or do you want? No, to that's fine. Through? We can get his whole thoughts, and then we'll go into the rest of the. Yeah, what were your thoughts on the on the day? Oh wow! Um, I mean, as far as being a collector, definitely, I wouldn't be afraid to say the pinnacle of my collecting in the years that I've been collecting. I've been collecting a long time, um, but I do feel now like I know the community on a on a little bit deeper level. You know, I I've seen these names around. A lot of them were you know like old rebel scum handles which i still go by mine on facebook but um to be able to put names of faces and um you know like don henderson don was there and yeah. i didn't even i knew he was coming but i didn't know what he looked like i bought stuff from don 20 years ago <laughs> and he walked in and he and i both afterwards were like oh my god that was you um <laughs> So, yeah, it was just such an overload to see all of these people. I mean, obviously, you had the guys from Star Wars Collector Archive. You know, Chris G was there and, and Ron and Gus and Steve. But then all of these other folks who were om almost celebrity status in the yeah. collecting community to see all of those people in one room and everybody hanging out, you know, Matt Erickson pushing whiskey on people and <laughs> it was uh wow just what an event you know um i unfortunately didn't get to come up on thursday for the movie um but i drove up on friday and went to narayan's house to sort of help him get set up i met ryan and gary gary ray weaver there which first time i ever met gary and yeah you know gary's been around for years as well and um we hung out at narayan's house on friday and and had that event on Friday night and just seeing all these people and yeah, it was, it was, it was almost too much to take in because after it was all over, it was like, wow, I didn't get to talk to this person or I didn't get to talk to that person. You know, David Quinn was there and we spoke a couple of times, but we didn't get to have any sort of in-depth conversation. So um, if 
this ever happens again, we got to do it, you know, <laughs> four days or so. <laughs> no. Jason, no, no, I'll no. see Jason's eyes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Shh. Go back to your hole. And this episode is concluding. Thank you for listening to this month of Galaxy Podcast. Yeah. Well, no, it is when you when you said if it happens again, I keep like because there's just a running total in your head of what you're going to do better next time or things you learn. And then I talked to my wife and she's like her and Shannon's got a list. And, you know, it's like there's a lot. I mean, yeah, it, it and I keep but I I say all this because I keep bugging Jason. I keep poking the bear. I'm like, let's start. Let's start talking, man. Let's talk. And he's like, no, dude, no, no. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> I need, well, I need my rest. It's the same energy, I think, that caused you and and justin to create the club you know yeah. it's that rush that high after well it was after celebration orlando for you guys and you didn't want it to end you know right i think it's the same thing with this is why not just myself but a lot of folks who who were there were they don't want it to end they are like we got to do this again because the spontaneity was great. I loved that part of it. Everything was just so spontaneous. So you had all of these parts assembled and this sort of magic happened. And that was the word I guess that I used the most to describe it. As it was going on, it was it was just this magical moment for for the collective community. And I just, you know, if anything, thank you guys for making it happen because I know there was just a lot of work that went into this and and but you know when you when you bring people who are passionate together that way and you know sort of delegate um to folks who who pour their heart into this this hobby um yeah I, I it, it there's there's no other way to explain it it's just it was a magical event and yeah to you know Saturday wow you know, you walk in and you see you know, the guy who literally created Boba Fett out of thin air. I mean, you know, we didn't even know what he looked like. This is the guy who told us sort of what he looked like um, to have John there. And, you know, all the other folks that just, uh, wow, meeting Paul Harrison. That was, I met Paul on Friday night at Narayan's house and we just gelled i don't know what it was we just clicked like kindred spirits or something it was so crazy and you know ended up saturday sort of hanging out uh all the the panelists you know you guys brought us into the room before everything got started and just sitting there at that table with all of these folks from the hobby it was it was it was really special so Good. yeah kudos to you guys was that sort of a surreal moment because you're in that room with all those people, with those panelists? Because it was like, <laughs> there's Steve Sansweet, there's Tim Effler, there's. It was, but it was such an ease, you know. Um, I, I I do wish that uh, that uh, Tim and Howard could have gotten there a little bit earlier because, you know, they came in just to, just as I was starting my panel, but somebody had posted a uh, a picture on the Facebook page. <clears throat> and it's me presenting and Tim Effler's front and center. And you see Tim sitting there watching me present. Yeah. I, as far as I'm concerned, that was it. That was the pinnacle of, of everything I've done in star, the Star Wars collecting realm to be sitting there presenting a panel <laughs> talking about Bernie Lewis and, and Sears to the guy who designed and created this stuff. I mean, I was, I was a Kenner kid. Let me tell you. I mean, oh. I had tree tots. I had $6 million man. I had the stretch monster. I had star Wars, you know, all of those things. And so <clears throat> to me guys, like, like Tim, who, you know, we've, we've hung out with Tim on numerous occasions and, wow, the guy's just amazing. The stories that he has to share and is so eager to share them. I think he's so happy to find people who want to know about this stuff. I, I think he really feels appreciated. I think that's that's really the cool thing with Howard as well. This is the first time he'd ever done an event like this. Um, you know, Howard had posted a few times uh, over the years on uh, the Kenner Collector site and uh, was on their, their um, 
forums and just posting responses to people because I think he was so excited to see that people were eager to to learn about how Kenner worked, the inner workings of that company and the people who designed and created these toys. I think Howard was just <laughs> blown away. He and was. That, from what you guys were saying in the first episode, I think we could have literally done a two to three hour panel and just turn those two guys on and let them go. The room, they had the room in the palm of their hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that was really, you know, to, to be hanging out with those guys and, and, you know, to have Steve Sansweet come up and shake your hand and go, that was a really good panel. I mean, wow. As, as, as a collector, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't get any better than that. So, uh, yeah, we had some great, great panels and, you know, I, I do think that was the real magic of it was the fact there was nobody leaving that room. Right. I think people were like, <laughs> they're like I'm yeah. not going to the bathroom until this is done. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to miss a, a moment of this because it was just so special. It was. So, kudos, guys. Wow. Thank you. And then how late did you stay up on Saturday night? Um. Well, I, I guess I was up until Glenn came to my room to get beer. <laughs> that, that wasn't that late <laughs> i got it was like uh, midnight yeah i guess about oh, midnight God. i was i'm not i don't burn the midnight oil not like i used to anyway i i'm, I'm getting too old for that stuff and we were talking about that earlier i, I have a, a pretty rigid sleep schedule i've gotten up at 5 a.m for almost 20 years now so yeah i have to get my circadian rhythm is strong <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i uh yeah, I went upstairs as much as I hated to to leave the action. I was also just very drained. I was, and and that's why you know I, I'm not surprised, Jason, that you were as exhausted as you were because, you know, Glenn was talking about how you had um, when you got that mic in your hand, it was like you turned into like a game show. Host. Welcome everyone to the Rob yeah. Fun. <laughs> you you gotta that's what i do every day as far as you know being being a history teacher mm -hmm. and when you're on like that it really does especially if you're you know introverted yeah it just brings the energy out of you to be on like that um so yeah i um uh, i was pretty tired but yeah i didn't want it to end it was uh it was just such an incredible day and Obviously, was excited to go do the Kennesaw run the next morning. I mean, I've, I've seen everybody's collection. I think the thing that was was probably the the highlight of the Kennesaw run was watching Steve Sansweet walk in Tim Cotter's front door. <laughs> so tell us, tell us. I, I, I mean, we weren't there, so please, you're filling in a void that we don't have. So wow. Uh, Tim, Tim is a major collector. He's an incredibly friendly guy. That's an understatement. He's open. That's an understatement. <laughs> He's open. And uh, so tell us what happened when Steve Sansweet went into the Rancho Obi-Wan of Georgia. Yeah. He he literally walked in and was speechless. He was slack-jawed. He walked in the living room. And the interesting thing of watching him go through, I don't think anybody – sort of mentally cataloged everything that Tim had the way that Steve did. Like Steve was like, where did you get this? I mean, this is the guy in the Guinness Book of World Records for the right. Life of Wars collection. And he's asking Tim, where did you get this? <laughs> it's uh yeah, and he just meticulously went room by room. <laughs> and just took it all in it was yeah it, that was pretty powerful <laughs> to see yeah. someone like that walk into tim's house because i'd seen tim's house it's exhausting <laughs> when you leave <laughs> tim's house you're like mentally exhausted from trying to take it all in because it is literally wall to wall in the cupboards in the kitchen I did find out that Tim ended up moving his refrigerator into the garage so he could have more space in the kitchen. Yeah, he's trying to expand to give himself more space. Yeah, yeah. He he, he it's what he said. I'm gonna build a house behind my house to live in. Yeah. <laughs> but um 
It was my understanding that uh, Tim was pretty extrovert, talking about introvert. He's like us. He's quiet and introvert and shy. But when Steve was over, he was talkative, and you couldn't stop him from talking. And yeah, him up. yeah. He, uh, I think, I definitely think that was was maybe. I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think it was probably Tim's pinnacle for the weekend was to have Steve Sansweet, the guy who's in the Guinness Book of World Records. And we all know Steve. Everybody's seen Steve on all of the documentaries, the toy documentaries, the Star Wars documentaries. I mean, the guy's a legend. And Author. for Tim to have that, have, have Steve in his house admiring his collection, I do feel like, you know, Tim was just on cloud nine. It was, it was amazing to see. Um, I didn't realize until, you know, Steve walked in that I would be privy to that. And yeah, I think a lot of folks just sort of stood back and watched. Nice. So nice. it was, it was pretty incredible. Um, yeah, I didn't have it Tim. so good for, for you guys when I came to y'all's place. Um, Cause uh, Jason, I came to your place first, which is actually in between. Yeah. So obviously I did not plan this out properly. <laughs> Um, uh, quite a few folks had sort of showed up to your place and, you know, like Stu and, and some of those guys, uh, Bruce, yeah, Bruce, yeah. Uh, George Roy was there Yep. Um, at your place. We all sort of started there and obviously crossed paths as we were going through the whole, the whole thing. But I got to Glenn's house and Steve and, and, and those folks, they, everybody was sort of leaving as I got to Glenn's house. And so I just went on downstairs and you know, sort of invited myself in. <laughs> Sorry, Glenn, you're that kind of friend. Right. <laughs> just started taking some Bill and Ted stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you're that kind <laughs> of friend. Well, well, I haven't been there so kind of you to share. Right. Well, <laughs> well, it was funny when you say that, because like Britain was here and we had a lot of people upstairs and he just walks downstairs. I forgot he was here and he walks back up and I'm like, oh, crap, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> well, I mean, I will say that it everybody sort of treats us. It, it's mutual respect. You know, you're talking about collectors visiting other collectors' collections. Right. It, it was, that was another interesting thing of watching people. I do think, Glenn, that your place, folks tended to interact a little more because you have that centerpiece with a lot of loose items on it. And I did see a couple of people interacting with those things, but for the most part, at every stop it was like watching people in a museum everybody with their hands you know sort of clasped or behind their back and and just admiring and sort of taking it in because you know as collectors we're we're a little quirky about this stuff. <laughs> don't touch my stuff <laughs> right so i want to know who quirky. was touching my stuff it's like wait a minute <laughs> but i have seen i did i know what you're talking about i had seen pictures where people are like hands on Legos or like really close to my Lego set. Like that, that's what I have in the center. And I was like, Oh man, I hope you didn't break anything. <laughs> well, I've only got like one piece of really expensive Lego, uh, which is like the original ghost, but the rest of it, I don't, you know, not that I don't care about it, but you know, you, you know where to put stuff where, you know, people, you know, expensive stuff's behind glass, you know? Yeah. So well, that was the other thing. I hadn't been to your collection since you added the the labels to the Bill and Ted case, and that it seriously, dude, that case feels like it should be in a museum. Thank yeah, you. It, it does. Just, it who has did that? that feel. I, I, who? Did, yeah, you know who did? Who did, did that? Who did the labels? Who did that? <laughs> the my Star buddy Wars Jason. Renaissance man himself. <laughs> right, my buddy Jason did the labels, but yeah, I did. Uh, you don't realize how much it takes just doing something simple like a label takes your collection like two steps yeah yeah in a, in a good direction but yeah it um i don't know how that to me was the most exhaust i mean yes yeah, saturday was exhausting but you don't realize how showing your collection off for two hours exhausts you because yeah. you're on your feet you're all over your house you uh i think at like 12 12 30 i'm like I need to get something to eat because <laughs> I didn't, you know, you wake up and you're, you're on all day, you know? And, uh, I had like a half a bagel at like noon and I was like, that's the only thing I had till we got to bowl it. Yeah. So I got up uh, at, huh? I went to bed at one. I got up like around six or seven, went to Krispy Kreme, started vacuuming because we, I didn't have time. People were coming in and out Thursday night. 
Mm-hmm. And obviously they're bringing like in dust and st- dirt and, and leaves and stuff, which is fine. But I just didn't have time from Thursday to Sunday to vacuum and clean and tidy up. And we still had like stuff out from not, we had some paint plates and stuff out and from, from Thursday night. So we, I quickly got up and had to clean everything and vacuum and like really hit the road, uh, get up and hit the road and, and uh, get things done by nine o'clock because people were coming over. Yeah. And it, it legitimately, it started at nine o'clock and didn't end until like one. When I told people, uh, we're gotta go bowling. Yeah. <laughs> and then people were like, okay, fine. I, I, cause I looked at Narayan and I, I was like, dude, I, I, would you mind just dropping what you're doing and getting to the bowling alley? Because we need a representative there. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, he, he, he was able to do that. Um, because I, I still had like first. 10 or 50, probably like five or 10 people still in my house at 1230. Yeah, I had people there at 1245, but I was like, I, I got to go to bowling. And I got there like at 1259 and got the instructions. And the first pe- person showed up at one o'clock and I was able to be like, hey, go get your shoes there. And But I was just like tired and dizzy and just I wasn't I was just like I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel overwhelmed just there. thinking about being overwhelmed at at, at bowling. <laughs> but but I did go. It. Go ahead. What? No, no, no. Go ahead. But I did like we checked in. People were coming up. I was like, "Welcome to Walmart," because I was standing up front for bowling, and <laughs> they were coming in. I was pointing them which way to go, and it was about one thirty that I felt good that everybody was there. At least most everybody was there, and went to the front desk because I knew they were playing stuff from cable because they had like. TNT on for basketball and different sports. And I was like, I know you guys play cable. Can you turn on Star Wars? And they're like, no, we can't do that, man. <laughs> I was like, that stinks because I know it's May 4th weekend. It was T, was it T? Maybe it's TNT that had basketball. Anyways, one of them was playing a marathon because uh... it was on in the lobby of the hotel during the modern prototype room sales. Okay. And it was about an hour in that they turned Revenge of the Sith on. The, the big TVs. So we were playing bowling and, and with the backdrop of Revenge of the Sith. Of course, at three o'clock when everything was over, uh, Empire Strikes Back came on. Oh. <laughs> right. I could just imagine you at the front desk going, it's a shame you can't play Star Wars because we're here with a Star Wars club bowling yeah. from a Star Wars weekend on May the 4th, which is Star Wars Day. And we did give you all that money. Right. Yeah, right. I was I was yeah. <laughs> we paid a lot of money to be here. Right. It was a good time. Um everyone had fun. The food was I mean it was bowling food, but I didn't think it was that bad. No, Dave it wasn't brought, bad. Dave brought, brought brought me a that was a weird. Dave brought brought me a uh uh whiskey on the rocks. So I just sat in the back, like Glenn was saying, holding court last week. He, he called it that, but <laughs> I was like right in the middle. So people were coming back and forth to get their food. And I was just hanging out because I knew if I was bowling, first of all, I was exhausted. So there was no way that I had the energy in me to bowl. But I knew that if I did bowl, I would only be able to hang out with the five, six people sitting in that that lane. Whereas if I was sitting in the back, just hanging out, talking to people, I mean, I got, I think I had a much richer experience doing that than, uh, bowling itself i was able to talk and connect which which was something that was missing for me the whole weekend because i was busy executing that was your grand finale that was exactly so for an hour and a half i was able to sit back relax talk to people say goodbye (laughs) hi (laughs) bye (laughs) sorry i'm sorry to to talk to you (laughs) right yeah yeah i kind of wish i'd have done that but i i had been like building myself up for the bowling and then half the people i want you know like because mark was going to be there and then he his plans changed and he was like i'm gonna show you how to bowl and i'm like all right let's go <laughs> and, and then he his plans changed and he couldn't make it uh, uh and i think looking back on the weekend i wish i would have done the, just pulled a stool right up next to you and chilled out and um uh, even though i enjoyed you know i still enjoyed it because i was bouncing back and forth from bowling to where you guys were um but no you uh yeah i think you had the right idea because you were right next to the food right next to the drinks and you know you and rich were talking and then steve sand sweets right next to you so he's talking and you know it was just um bowling was fun uh but yeah it was um when it was over it was it was sad it's like the last day of camp right it was like i don't (laughs) want it to end 
<laughs> yeah, <I didn't, laughs> we have to go back to way, Saturday though. night here in a minute too, because there's stuff we need to finish talking about that we didn't that we skipped over. But uh, yeah, no, when uh, when Bo, everybody when three o'clock rolled around and the, they shut the lanes down, I was like, I don't want it to end, Jason. And he's like, Nope, it's over. We're done. I'm going home. I'm going to bed. I am <laughs> done with this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe I don't have regrets, or I mean, I wish I had more time to hang with people. But at the end of the thing, and even today, I'm just like. I did. I did what I set out to do. We, right. we executed our vision. I didn't change things up because I was freaking out that people from, you know, Australia and Sweden were showing up. Like, I stuck to the course. I did what we had to do, and it was a success. So there's no reason to feel regretful or that I've left something on the table. Like, I try to be well, humble, yeah. but we knocked it out of the park. We did, and and I Absolutely. think, but before you go into your thing, I think. They're always not regrets, but you're always going to be like, I wish I would have spent more time with this person. No matter how much time you spend with people, yeah. you know, there's always going to be somebody you miss. But there was a part of me that, yes, I do miss that. But <clears throat> excuse me, I do feel like I provided an environment where people can hang out and connect in ways that they couldn't. Um, and so that was rewarding in itself. I I, sure, I'll I'll make myself busy and do what I have to do to give these people a great time. Right. That's the cost, and it's the cost. What were you going to say, Jerry? Well, you were talking about <clears throat> Saturday night. I, so that's one of the things I never had a chance to thank you guys because when we had the the audio issue, or I, I guess it was the the video when the video the issue went out. That was so smooth, like. I never once felt awkward. That television went out and I made a joke to Mark about kicking the thing. And you guys just swooped in almost like it was planned. I don't know if you guys were just, okay, if anything happens, this is what we're going to do. But that's what it seemed like because you guys came in and it was almost like the perfect intermission. <laughs> <laughs> I had gone through the first part of my panel, which was, and, you know, I was trying not to get too bogged down in Sears history because I can really dork out about that stuff. <laughs> I, I talked about Richard. Really, that was sort of how I set the whole thing up. I was doing this sort of comparison of Richard Sears as this marketing genius that built this huge enterprise retail you know, empire to... Bernie Loomis, who was also a marketing genius uh, as far as, you know, in the toy industry. And so I, I felt like though they were almost kindred spirits and sort of cut from the same cloth. Um, so I spent the first part setting up everything of, OK, well, here's Richard Sears and here's Bernie Loomis. And then I we talked about the holiday special a little bit. And that's where everything fizzled and fried or whatever that was with the video card thing. You guys swooped in, and I remember Jason at one point, he's like, just keep going. And I'm like, well, I can't keep going because at this part in the presentation is where I'm turning to the catalog, and it's all about looking at the pages of the wish book. That's when we had so, to make a decision, and we were right, like, oh, yeah, auction, you, forget it. You're oh, right, because you, 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 you had said, I was going to mention that, because you were like, um, guys, I really... Free. I don't. I know you didn't curse, but it felt like. And I think if it would have been just us, you'd have been like, "I really effing need these monitors because it's very uh, uh, imperative, visual, or uh, what were you going to say? What did you say? Jason? Imperative. It's imperative that we had the monitors because people needed to see what he was talking about. Right, and you were just like, "I can't do it, guys." And then that's the time that Jason just hands me the microphone and goes auction. And I have done so many of these auctions through the years that it's just like, hand me an item, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and if that had happened in the first five minutes of that presentation, I would have probably freaked out <laughs> because I was I was pretty intimidated going into that whole thing. But by the time that it happened, I made a couple of jokes and I felt like the room was really dialed in. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how dialed in until afterwards or, you know, I had Toby Black from the Canadian posse come up i mean i barely got finished and he was up there dude you know we're doing an event in august we really love for you to be there and i was like wow i guess they liked it but at, 
at the moment that 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 whole video issue happened, the room was sort of warmed up, and I felt I had already sort of established a, a rapport with them, and I guess that's why I made the joke. Um, I can't remember who it was. Somebody was like, you know, I I didn't realize you had an accent until you were doing the presentation because you know I'm born and raised in South Georgia. You can't not have an accent. I can turn it on, turn it off without much trouble, but when I get comfortable around folks is where it sort of sneaks out occasionally. And apparently I'd said when, when the, the, the video monitors went out, I, I said something to the degree of Mark, kick that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's what they were referring to, but, but yeah, I'd warmed up to the room. I felt like the, the folks who were there warmed up to me. I saw that people were engaged you know, that's what they always teach you with like public speaking. You always identify your your um, active listeners. Well, yeah. from what I saw, most everybody in that room was active listeners by that yeah. point. So I wasn't really worried from that point on. So I was making jokes and you guys just, it was just so well-timed and went so smoothly. And then he got the videos back up and, like we didn't miss a beat, went right back into it. So here's the start of the show, the Sears Wish Book. And we started sort of going through that. And it was just, wow. It, it Yeah, I I felt like, it, 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 you know, I heard you guys in the last episode, we were talking about, you know, the, the snafu or whatever. But I don't think that a major malfunction of that caliber <laughs> could have gone more smoothly than it did. So, yeah. yeah. Kudos to you guys again. <laughs> so and, and I'll save my we'll, ass. Man. <laughs> we'll we'll talk more about this on the next episode. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, so going back into like Saturday night after room sales, because uh, did you did you pick anything up at room sales, Jerry? Um, the only the only big purchase I made, and it was bigger than I really cared to pay, but it was well <laughs> worth it. I bought one of Howard Howard Bollinger's Kenner business cards. Yeah, uh, he was selling them, and you know, I was I was hoping that he was not going to price it quite as high as he did because he had a lot of business cards from his. I don't know if you guys saw his little business card yeah, time I, that he brought, but wow, he's got a business card from practically every period of his career, all the way up, you know, through through Hasbro, and um, yeah, I got one of his early. Kenner business cards uh, of, of all the things I got, I think, yeah, this is it <laughs> <laughs> That's right awesome. there, man. Um, <laughs> and I think the other thing it, it was, it was, it was not so much about what I was purchasing as much as it was those moments. Mm-hmm. Cause you guys saw, I had the toy ventures magazine that Brian Heiler had sent me. And that was sort of a crazy thing that sort of all happened to be able to give that to Tim mm-hmm. um, at the event. And we got some pictures. That was really what Brian was, was trying to do. Cause I had reached out to Brian um, prior to the event. I had ordered the new issue number 12 toy ventures magazine, which is a cover story on stretch monster. And um, I had ordered it back in March in hopes that I would have it to bring to the event. Cause I wanted to get Tim to sign it. But, and, and real quick, Tim, just so people who don't know, Tim's the one that made the Stretch Monster who designed yeah, it. Yeah, Tim Effler, the designer of of the Stretch Monster. Uh, and we talked before. I mean, you know, we had uh, the winter social at Justin Haney's house, and Tim was there, and he held court and, yeah, told all the stories. I mean, it was amazing. So I knew that it was going to be a great uh, issue of Toy Ventures magazine because he was – sort of the, you know, the center of the whole thing is this big interview that Brian had conducted with him for the cover story. And so um, I contacted Brian uh, the weekend before Rogue Fun and I'm like, hey, um, I ordered this. I was really hoping I could get it. Is there any way you're going to be able to ship these out this week? Because I'm going to see Tim this weekend. I want to get him to sign it. And he's like, yeah, I'm working as fast as I can. At that point, he was really under under the gun to try and get to get the magazines out. He was doing, uh, he did an inflatable uh, stretch monster as well. Um, since, you know, the real ones are almost impossible to find. And if you can't find them, you don't want to touch them. But um, he, um, he reached out to me like literally Wednesday, the event starts Thursday. 
<laughs> and he goes, he's just out of nowhere. I get this message on my phone and it's Brian. And he goes, are you still going to see Tim this weekend? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, if I overnight you some magazines, can you give him the magazine and get me some pictures this weekend? And I'm like, dude, I'd be honored <laughs> to be a part of that because yeah, I do. I have so much respect for those guys. And so to be able, and he did, he literally overnighted it directly from the printer. I, I think he said, I got my copies before he got his copy. Wow. And he overnighted it. It was on my front door on Thursday when I got home, which another reason I'm glad. Unfortunately, I didn't get to come to the movie, Jason, but I'm, I'm glad that I waited till Friday because I wouldn't have been able to pull that off. Right. And it was on the doorstep when I got home Thursday afternoon. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing. <laughs> and then to be able to give that to Tim and see his face, that that was that was another big highlight for me for the weekend so to meet howard um to get him to sign my my early bird envelope you guys know i collect all the kenner guys yep my early bird um to get a, a business card from howard i mean that was yeah that was that was it for me i mean i i brought money and and, and bought a couple of odds and ends little things and a couple of retro figures and, and things like a couple of books um, but that, yeah, I didn't buy a whole lot of stuff, but it really, this weekend wasn't, it wasn't about that. It no. honestly, for me, I felt like the, the, the swag thing that was incredible. And I just could not believe the caliber of swag that was there. People really brought their a game with this and, you know, I'd never done any swag before. And so I will go ahead and give Jason kudos for helping me design that what back in january i think it yep. was yep um to, jason to was it. uh swag king jr for this event because he was designing <laughs> everybody's swag i helped you i helped tony i helped susan i helped wow. whoever needed it wow yeah. it, it was it was much I helped glenn yeah so. he helped us design it but it um, was and, and you did all those great designs and i could not use them so <laughs> i found that I, I sort of got the bug from Narayan and I, as the weeks were going on leading up, I was getting, Oh, well I, I can do this. And Oh, mm -hmm. I can do that. And I just mm -hmm. kept getting more and more stuff. And it ended up being a whole like packet <laughs> of stuff for two different events. I did a, a packet for Narayan's place uh, for his event, uh, at the most Atlanta cantina. And then I did another packet for the panel, uh, the panel gift. So yeah. Um, definitely caught the swag bug for this one, and I, I'm pretty sure it won't be the last time. So, just Thanks today, my me. wife was like, "I just found a new bag of swag upstairs, <laughs> <laughs> and no clue what's in it or where it came from." But there's a bag of swag up here, so I got to go through that. But Glenn, did what you, were you guys? Did you get the Friday night thing, the little pack yes. with the three pins and the coaster? Yeah. Okay, as long as you got those, I because I couldn't remember because you guys you got there late and uh, you I gave it to me Saturday night. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, you had given me a, a few things. So there was okay. a lot of people coming up to me and just going here. So, yeah. What were I've you going to say, Glenn, about stuff. midnight? Say that again? Were you going to go? You, did you have a topic about midnight? At, well, at... no, I just wanted to, when we um, had broken down, it was another, because um, we had basically had said, put out a call for everybody to help break down. And uh, we, Oh, number one. Well, first of all, the karaoke didn't go as planned, which was a little bit of a bummer. But you, I think everybody. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. I was, I was, <laughs> I was ready. ready to... <laughs> it was the right call. Well, yeah, I think yeah, it was. J Jason, you said you had a lot of people that were kind of poo pooing on it, right? Or yeah, it was the it, right it, call. It we lost control of the room. The plan was like half of the room would be room sales, the other half would be karaoke. But like, it was the whole room was room sales, and it was yeah. just it got out of hand, and and then some. It was out in the hall. Yeah. Dude, it was everywhere. I had to put my stuff in the because I had it kind of set up because I had ceramics and I had mine kind of on the floor. And Mark was like, "You're gonna hold my line," and then I kept looking at people walking by this stuff, and I'm like, "This is hundreds or if not a thousand, you know, this is a lot of this is expensive stuff. I can't let yeah. people just walk by it, you know, and knock it over and break it." So thankfully. Uh, Mandy and Shannon were set in the hall and I was able to set some stuff next to them and people kind of knew it was mine and was able to at least connect with me and, and sold a few things. But uh, yeah, that room sale, it, we went from it, 
we got done with the picture and the room was full. And when I talked to Tony, he was saying that he he missed the picture so he could make sure he had a table. And uh, I think a lot of people that were ready for room sales, because the minute I announced rooms, you know, we're going to do a picture and then we're going to do room sales, like the back half of the room cleared out. And I think a lot of people rush to get their stuff for room sales then and then get set up. Tony so wasn't in the photo. Tony, I don't Tony, know. Tony uh, John, Johnson. Johnson. Big Was it Johnson? Johnson? He wasn't yeah, in the picture. Was he in the? I don't know. I thought he said I he missed it. He but, got in that picture. But maybe you, he, he got wasn't in, it. in the picture, or I couldn't find is Gus. Gus is there. Is he? Yeah, he's behind someone, but he's there. I was wondering. I there's two people, and I saw a little face. I was like, that might. He's one of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the other thing, guys. If you look at that picture, everybody is just cheesing it up. You right. can see the happiness. I mean. Yeah, Rogue Fun, perfect name because yeah, you could see that on everybody's face in that picture. And and when we talk about oh, I had a I had a Star Wars event that my Star Wars club, me and and the guys from the Star Wars club, we had an event and, and that's the picture I show people. I'm like, you want to see how big it was? Look at this picture. And they're like, oh crap. I said, yeah, we had that many people come to our event that was set up that we've been planning nine months, eight months for. Uh, and then they realize when they see that picture, they realize the scope of it. And that, like you said, it captures everything perfect. Yeah. That group picture. That's um, what my wife said when she saw it. She's like, oh my God, there were that many people. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't mess around. People. No, Jason threw the threw the gauntlet down. He was like, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it. Go big or go home. Yeah. That's well, what I, I told I, I know you you live that, man, because in your you're type A like I am. If you're going to do something, you're going to do it 110%. Really? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. But I wasn't going to be a type B or whatever for this no, event. I, I had to be a type A. Yeah. I told my wife, when the Wasokos throw a party, you don't say no. Because <laughs> they bring it. Yeah, no doubt. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so um, this was just a big extension of a Wasoko party. Because I told Jason, I said, I need to clone you for whenever we decide to do this again. Because you need you he he took a lot of it on and i'm like dude we've got to figure out a way to to relieve some of that pressure off of you and he's just like you're not cloning me so no, i kind of exist in that though so without that pressure without that like i just have nothing to focus on and that's part of the reason why i'm not ready to talk about part two is because i, I need to i need to miss it and i need to it needs to be a passion thing and i need to have yeah. the drive and the focus the hyper focus and it's it's going to take some time to be like, okay, I'm ready to do this. I need, mm -hmm. I need to walk away. I need to refresh. I need to miss it and, and want to do it again. And once I want to do it, it's going to be. It, gone. it's going to be on like Donkey yeah. Kong. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. Cause I just, I know you that well that it, you know, and now I've learned you more through this, you know, learn, I've, I've learned more about you through this process. So it's like, if that's what you need, I'm not going to stop you, but yeah. I definitely want, I feel like there, it needs to, you know, but anyway, uh yeah you after go ahead that's what that's what happens with a lot of those conventions and stuff i think is it mm -hmm. does it goes from this passion thing to this just going through the motions and that's where you lose that magic i think yep. you know i was i was talking to ben sheehan because i was hoping he would be able to to make it and uh but i was talking to him afterwards and um I'd said to Ben, I was like, yeah, I don't think Jason's ready to do this as like an annual thing. It's like, maybe do it every three years like they did the original trilogy movies. Pace it out every three years. You make people want it, you know? And I yeah. think he even said, he's like, that's what Disney's done. He's like, they, they've they lost that passion because it's just about churning out money for them. Right. It's it, that's, yeah, exactly. It's not, that magic's not there. And, and yeah, if it takes doing it spacing out every three or four or even five years to keep that passion alive but i can tell you this much if you announce another one <laughs> they will come uh you know we talked about this you better make it big man because you thought it sold out fast this time <laughs> yeah we'll see um so hold on yeah. I, I i let me let me let me finish saturday unless you got something to say or if you want to stay on saturday but i i've got stuff to say about saturday I, i'm say sorry your stuff about saturday so anyway we break down saturday and as soon as the room is like clear you i like walk in the room and i'd like you see the little tear welt up because it's like 
it five minutes before it or half an hour before it was a room full of happy Star Wars people and it was just beautiful and then it's back to being a reception hall just a plain reception hall so I mean that was sort of a uh it's a moment in time yeah and then like afterwards because after we had loaded everything out everybody's kind of hugging you know me Jason and the Ryan were like yeah we did it it'd been hugging and we're thanking everybody and Josie his daughter looks at me and goes did you just hug my dad twice? Yeah, you attacked me. <laughs> she was like, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He must be delirious because he let you hug him twice. <laughs> she knows me. That's awesome. I was but exhausted. But yeah, no, it, it was just, you know, and, and then after Three times Saturday, you would have gotten a uh, sucker punch. <laughs> <laughs> Jason would have been like, I don't care how exhausted I am. You're not getting back a off, hug. bra. <laughs> Um, no. And then after, um, cause then we went afterwards, everybody, cause I messaged you about getting a couple of beers and I got the beers. We get down back down to the lobby. I, I drink one and I, I think I go, well, first of all, shots were going all around the lobby. And about that time I, I pop a beer and then the Ryan looks over at us and does his, who wants Waffle House? <laughs> Was he joking? No, that's Narayan's deal, man. Oh, yeah. He wants Waffle House after everything. Did he go? You came with us. Wait, was that that <laughs> night? <laughs> that you was Saturday burnt, night, man. man. Oh, so I didn't go to bed till two, and then I woke up at six for. <laughs> oh, I did go with the Indiana guys. They I took a picture. There's proof. You, you were came there. with us to Waffle House. It's such Jason. a blur. I forgot, but Apparently I you're really. In the Twilight Zone. <laughs> I really love those Indiana guys, Todd and Matt. Those guys. No, are that great. was that. Yeah, we went with them, and and then we're having dinner, and we look out in the parking lot, and there's kids with lightsabers. Yep. Oh. And then a bunch of people from the event showed up like at 2 a.m. as we were leaving. And that's when we took that group picture is when that's they awesome. arrived and sat down and we were leaving. We had paid and we were taken off. Right. We we they they had come in and they were like <laughs> drunk stumbling in the Waffle House. And we're like, we're, oh, my God. But they I completely forgot I was there at Waffle House. <laughs> that's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, she got a good picture of Tony Johnson. I couldn't believe it. He was uh you know, Yeah. Yeah, he was Tony's part of that. always like that guy. He's always right. the guy. he's cut out of the picture. But yeah, you got a great picture of Tony Johnson here at Waffle House. And then uh we did raise money for charity. We did yeah. we did some some good. We Saw donated that. what seven hundred and fifty bucks to Choa, eight hundred yep. bucks. Yeah, seven Children. seven fifty to Choa and twenty five hundred to Rancho. To Rancho wow. Obi Wan, so the That's best great. part is that we really didn't have to dip into our pockets to pay for this event. We there was an equilibrium, and, yeah. and we achieved it. <laughs> Thankfully, I could sleep at night, not worry about do I need to spend a couple hundred bucks on this? Do I need to dip my wallet into this? Like we were good. We were good. right. That's great because so, it came down to the wire. It was close, but it we, was real close. But we balanced out. Yeah, we're but, hey, you got all this equipment now, and uh, I mean, the club's the club's better for it. Not saying another rogue fund necessarily, but if we ever do anything in the future for the you know for the club, I mean, you know, we can set stuff up, say second chance or something. You know, we yeah do, do an event. We we've got what we need to pull off that stuff. So yeah, and that was the thought of of doing that because Mark was like, "You guys are going to need it again, so you might as well just buy it." Absolutely. And then uh, Monday, I was able to go with Narayan to meet Rich and Steve for breakfast before Steve left, mm -hmm. and that was That's a good cool. time. Just it was quiet. It was kind of just what I exactly needed to kind yeah. of hang out and and have the moment that I didn't have all weekend, and it was it was nice. It was really nice. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately. I had to work. Yeah, I had to work. I, I didn't plan it right. What was I took what Monday was, off to recover? Yeah. What was Steve's reaction? Did he talk much about the weekend? Did he reflect that much when you were talking to him on Monday? Yeah, he thought it was a great time. I mean, we just we just shot the breeze. Like I did thank him at the end because um the whole he thought it was an amazing event and he was appreciative that we opened up our, our homes to him and all that. And and I told him like He's the role model. He's the one that started the collection and then opened it up to everyone and then started yeah. to knowledge share 
Um, I mean, when you talk about the panels, like the reason we do these panels is because he set the example that when you have knowledge, you share that knowledge. You don't gatekeep it for yourself. And yeah. when you have a collection, you don't keep it up in your attic for no one to see. You open your doors and you let people see it and let the imagination run wild. Let Star Wars do its thing and, and capture the imagination. And uh, I, I was very thankful to have the opportunity to thank him. That's cool. So, yeah, I spoke to to Gus on Friday, and I think that was sort of one of the things with him, probably Ron and Chris to some degree as well, is that they didn't have to present it. <laughs> yes, that they was just, another thing. They just sat back and enjoyed the whole thing, and 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 you could tell that they they did enjoy it. Yeah, um, that was another thing I didn't let get to my mind because the collecting track was an inspiration for something like this and ron did the annual so i was happy that they didn't have to do anything that they could just sit back and relax and kind of see what it's like to be a, a spectator but at the same time i mean i don't want to mess it up and i don't want them to sit there and be like if anything i didn't want them to sit there and be like oh they're they're not doing this right i i would prefer them to go you know what jerry should do this at the next celebration in orlando we should invite him down you know that's the kind of reaction i was hoping they would get or something yeah I don't well, know, it, but... it it got him invited to uh, Canada. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> so right that's on. hard. See, uh, See yeah. same thing with Toby. I mean, Toby puts on May the North, and and for him to kind of relax and enjoy the event from that perspective, hopefully yeah. that will they can go back and maybe they learn something. Yeah, exactly. Being that, from that perspective, and they can apply it and and improve on their event. I'm not saying that they need their events need to be you know improved or anything. I'm just. Best case scenario, they 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 learn something. Yeah. See things from different perspective. I think that's that's yeah. a plus. I mean, it's going to make everybody. It's that's the thing. It really was a gift to the collecting community. I think it was it was your your love letter. Yeah. To the collecting community, and 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 you could tell that people genuinely, you know, appreciated it. I, uh, I it sort of made me laugh. I told you guys that I don't know if I sort of told how it happened but while i was doing the panel and was going through the catalog pages for the wish book there's an item that's in the 1978 wish book and it's called a space bullhorn slash walkie talkie it was one of those items that you know sears just sort of label slap they made it in blue and white plastic it almost looks like the blue and white plastic from the um the bionic bionic, bionic transporter for six million dollar man and it was this toy that they sold. And it, there's a whole box in the in the wish book that shows this toy. That toy was used as a prop in Lumpy's bedroom <laughs> on Star Wars Holiday Special. And he sent me pictures in Messenger <laughs> while I was presenting. And I so wish I had seen that. I Obviously, my phone was buzzing in my pocket and I wasn't paying attention to it, not <laughs> thinking that. Oh, this is somebody in the audience who was sending me this. But, but yeah, Chris was like, "Oh my God, this is they, they used this for a prop in the movie," and he sent me like a screenshot of the scene of Lumpy's bedroom, and you see it, it's laying right there on the floor. Nice. So yeah, it was uh, just even more added to it. I had no idea that 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 item had been used in the holiday special. So That's awesome. yeah, well, he, that was better. Better your phone being vibrating than making a ringing noise when you're trying to turn it down in the middle of your panel. Yeah. I was like, Oh man, let me turn my phone, my ringer off and goes, and Mark looks at me and goes amateur. And I'm like, dude, I'm trying to turn my phone off because I didn't want to put it on silent because Mandy's texting me and I don't want to miss anything. And I'm like, well, let me just turn my, cause I've only, you know, I've never had to do it on my, I, I'm kind of new to Apple. I've had it for a couple of years, but it's the first time I had to do something like that. <laughs> and I totally didn't realize it was going to ring as I'm turning the ringer down. And I just, I was like, damn. <laughs> I mean, I guess it, <laughs> so I don't even know if you heard it or not, but Mark. I heard, just, it. Like, I heard it over there. <laughs> right. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> and, and, yeah. So, I was just so. like, man. So anyway, I know we're getting ready to wrap it up, right? Yeah. So before we wrap it up, we got to do a dad joke. Okay. We got to do dad jokes. Jerry, do you want to do dad jokes with us? That was an important part of Rogue Fun. <laughs> were the dad jokes? It's a way yeah. to focus yeah. people because I, I was, I wasn't expecting everybody to sit there. So I we we pulled dad jokes to get everyone's attention as a way to be like, we're about to start the panel. Here's your dad joke. Focus. I 
I will say that the caliber of dad joke at Rogue Fun was exceptionally better than some of the ones that I've heard on the podcast. So I'm thinking somebody must have gone through and cherry picked some of the better ones from the dad yes. jokes book. Yes. This it is not a very good dad. It, it's gotten to the point where it's so bad that I just want to keep doing it because they're just so bad. Um, well, for example. For example, hold on. Let me open it up to page. Uh, okay, hold on. This is page number 70 from Star Wars Dad Jokes by Kelly Cox. Number 70. Why did the rebel take a bath after stealing the Death Star plans? Look at your face. You don't approve of the answer. Why did the rebel take a bath after stealing the Death Star plans? For a clean getaway. <laughs> it's so It's okay. so bad. All right, here's the next one. I mean, that Why could apply does... to like a 1950s prohibition bank robbery it really does not star wars all right what does count dooku call a droid factory that meets its quota did i say 1950s i meant 1930s go ahead i I really hope i don't mess this one up okay i I think i got it a status factory wait say the say the the question again Okay, what does Count Dooku call a droid factory that meets its quota? A status factory? Yeah. Satisfactory. Status. No, it uh, says status. Status S- factory. It's because it's status. Because it's status. I don't get that. Okay. Uh, did, did, should I do two more or do you just want to? I think we're good. Thank I you think... for listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. If you could, please leave a like and a five-star review of the show. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, if it's a lot, it really helps us out and points people to our show. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Leave us a message or, yeah, leave a comment or message. Our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Thank you to Alfonso Riviera for the Smuggler's Galaxy logo. And thank, thank you, Levi Waterhouse, for the music. People, collect for the love of it. Hashtag vote with your wallet. Sabine will be on next week. Pass on what you've learned. Be a be a positive force in the collecting community. Did that by memory. This yes! Is the way. This is the way. This is the way.